Hi everyone, welcome back to Shades of Radiology. Today I'm going to discuss the, about the extra axial lesion and how to identify it. What are the signs of it? So there are various signs of extra axial lesion. This is a normal brain parenchyma. These are the pile vessels, the dura mater. And here you can see the extra axial lesion which is displacing the cerebral cortex and pile vessels. Let us see another example. So, presence of an extra axial lesion, the tumor is present here outside the brain parenchyma. You can see the CSF is forming a meniscus kind of appearance and the blood vessels or the pile vessels are displaced inward. That is, the vessels lie between the tumor and the cortex. Here is a classic example of meningioma. You can see the displaced cortex with pile vessels and the cortex is buckled here. So the important signs are, the two most important signs, the CSF cleft between the lesion and the brain parenchyma, the interposed pile vessels. These are the two most important signs to identify the presence of extra axial lesion. So this is the CSF cleft, you can clearly appreciate, which is also called as a meniscus sign or CSF cleft sign. And you can see the pile vessels between the tumor and the adjacent cerebral cortex. And this is the white matter buckling, you can see. This is the extra axial lesion forming the meniscus sign and the buckling of the white matter. These are the few illustrations which give a classic appearance if you have a well-defined benign extra axial lesion. The other signs are the cerebral cortex interposition, that is the presence of cortex between the tumor and the white matter. The broad dural base, you can see the dural base is broad towards the dura. Presence of dural tail on post contrast images and adjacent bony reaction like in case of hyperostosis in meningiomas, vasogenic edema in the adjacent brain parenchyma and few larger lesions which are extra axial cause vasogenic edema and there are various enhancement patterns which can help us the presence of the lesion is an extra axial lesion. Let us see with the cases. In case 1, you can see this is a posterior fossa or the occipital meningioma right side. You can see a CSF cleft and you can see a small pile vessels which are interposed between the lesion and the cerebral cortex. So this is called as a meniscus sign or CSF cleft sign. And this is another case along the cerebellar convexity. You can see again the CSF is interposed between the lesion and the cerebellum. And you can see the base is broad even here the base is broad here and you can see some amount of cortical thickening and compared to here there is some focal cortical thickening that is the hyperostosis in case of meningiomas and this is another case of meningioma which is midline of that is the parafalcine meningioma which is bilateral and you can see the csf cleft between the cortex and the tumor but not well appreciated in this section because of the thicker sections. You, you need to acquire a thinner sections for better delineation of the extra axial lesions. And this is the classic case of CP angle schwannoma. You can see again the mass effect, the broad base along the dura, and the CSF, thin strip of CSF between the lesion and the cerebellar peduncle. And this is causing the mass effect or by compressing and sometimes the Huge schwannomas can cause compression and cause severe compression of fourth ventricle causing hydrocephalus. So similarly, there are various extra axial lesions you need to keep in mind are the craniopharyngioma, the opticochiasmatic glioma, metastasis in case of neuroblastoma in case of children, and pituitary adenoma, meningioma, schwannoma like we have seen in the two cases, and metastasis which is very common. And these are the other posterior fossa lesions depicting the extra axial locations that is the schwannoma meningioma, metastasis, plasma cytoma, clivar lesions, paraglanglioma and metastasis. And you can see few intraaxial lesions that can mimic extra axial that is exophytic brainstem glioma, be careful. And ependymoma or choroid plexus papillomas and temporal bone lesions can mimic or if they are aggressive it can, it's very difficult to identify whether it is an intraaxial or the extra axial lesion. And this is a simplified approach which I have got it from the electronic poster of uh, European Society of Radiology. You can see 
can look back i will just show you the references so once you think about a hysterical lesion always look at the location if it is the convexity most common is the meningioma if it is a cp angle schwannoma meningioma and others like epidermoid which can have a dirty appearance on flare which is a characteristic feature of epidermoid and in middle cranial fossa and temporal convexities look of always think of arachnoid cyst it's very common and based on contrast enhancement if there is enhancement could be either meningioma, schwannoma or metastasis or various other differential diagnoses can come but these three are very common and if there is no enhancement think of arachnoid cyst or epidermoid cyst usually few most of the epidermoids do not show enhancement and this diffusion imaging can differentiate these two that is the presence of restriction indicates an epidermoid cyst and the cleft sign or the displacement of the brain parenchyma are the two important which I have already stressed about the extra axial lesions. So this is one of the important, uh, one of the great presentation done in EPOIs which is available freely online. You can have a look about it with classic cases and the signs for localization of whether it is an extra axial or an intra axial location. Thank you very much.